Now, the next in our series on the challenge of ending the AIDS epidemic. Earlier, we visited Russia and looked at the difficulties that nation is having with its epidemic. Tonight, with support again from the Pulitzer Center, we travel to Nigeria, a nation that is just 2% of the world's population, but accounts for almost a quarter of all HIV-positive babies. William Brangham and producer Jason Kane report how one innovative program is showing some real promise. The rhythm of Sunday morning in central Nigeria is slow and steady. Close to a thousand people pack into St. Vincent de Paul Church in Benue State, outside the town of Ali Ade, singing, praying, offering thanks. This may seem like just a traditional Sunday Mass, but what's going on in here is one of the most effective ways of stopping the spread of HIV. At the end of Mass, the priest asks any pregnant women and their partners and children to come forward. About 50 people gather near the altar. Defend these mothers and these fathers and their children from every evil. Be their companion along their pathway to life. They're given a blessing and invited to a special celebration later that's just for them. We call it healthy beginning. They're told there will be gifts and dancing and some medical care, malaria tests, high blood pressure. But the one thing that is not mentioned, the one that's the main point of this program, is HIV. Amaka Ogidi helped develop this program, which is called Baby Shower. She says that because of the stigma around HIV, they just can't say it at the beginning. Do you think if the priest got up there and said, we will give you HIV testing, do you think anyone would stand up? Uh, maybe, maybe one or two, but of course, uh, if they stand up and they are coming, and that's so, why is he going for a baby shower? It may not be for the test, that means he must have been living a very dubious life. But when you come to the main shower now, you will get the full detail. And that's by design? That's by design. It's not a mistake. It's for fools live land. After mass, the pregnant women and their partners are weighed and measured and screened for various conditions, things like hypertension and hepatitis B, which are also real problems in Nigeria. But the key test is HIV. We need the first 20 completed so that they can have their shower. The goal is to find pregnant women who are infected and get them on antiretrovirals. It will protect them from developing AIDS, but it will also greatly lower the risk that they'll transmit HIV to their babies. Left untreated, that transmission happens roughly 30% of the time. This kind of effort in Nigeria is long overdue. 200 miles away in the capital Abuja, three-year-old Mubarak Isa is dying of AIDS. His mother already died. In 2016, roughly 24,000 children died of AIDS-related causes in Nigeria. 12-year-old Yusuf Adamu is also very sick. He too lost his mother to AIDS. In Nigeria, roughly 37,000 children were newly infected in 2016. Over a quarter of a million are living with the virus. The sorest thumb here, the biggest problem, is mother-to-child transmission because it's so easy to stop, relatively speaking. We traveled to Nigeria with John Cohen. He's a reporter for Science Magazine who's covered HIV AIDS around the world and he was our partner on this series. Cohen says that when antiretroviral drugs proved their worth in the mid to late 90s, the world's wealthiest countries pooled their money to help beat back the epidemic. The first thing they targeted was pregnant women who were infected. Because if you got drugs to the women, it cut the rate of transmission dramatically. And as the drugs got better and better, it basically took the rate of transmission down to almost zero, under 1%. But those efforts have fallen short in Nigeria. One out of every four babies born worldwide with HIV is born in Nigeria. That's really not acceptable, considering that it's a condition that you can actually abolish. Dr. Sani Aliyu leads Nigeria's National Agency for the Control of AIDS. My argument has always been that within the general population, it's going to be a lot of work to put every 
everybody with HIV on treatment. For pregnant women, it's not the case. The numbers are small compared to the general, the people living with HIV within the general population. So it should be achievable, really. It should be a low-hanging fruit. Cue the baby shower program. Between the testing and waiting for the results, there's a lot of this, singing, dancing, and gift giving. After singing and dancing, we use this to support them. So this is gift. a gift for them? That's the baby shower gift. We call it Mama Pack. Mama Pack? Yes. And what's in there? Okay. What we have here, actually, the things that we aid them in delivery. The Mama Pack contains basics, like diapers and sanitary pads, but there's also medical supplies, rubbing alcohol and clamps for the umbilical cord. These are necessities the hospital would charge for. About 40% of women here don't give birth in hospitals. They'll stay at home or visit local birthing attendants. Part of this is just tradition, but part is also the cost. The hope is the Mama Pack will help steer moms to hospitals where they'll get better care, especially if they're HIV positive. So if they come in with this bag, they save money. They save not just money, but we are sure of the quality they are going to use. Within a few days of the church service, the baby shower team sets out to track down the women who tested positive and begin their mission of gentle nagging. Hello. They want to make sure moms visit the clinic and start their medications. Why have you not gone to the facility? You want to get your baby infected? Oh, make sure you go. How soon are you going? So you don't let them fall out of care? That's the issue. Several months ago, new mother Felicia Ada got the full baby shower treatment. Did you have any reason to believe that you would be HIV positive? No, I no believe like that. But when the test come, I was crying. Two weeks I had it crying. But she started on treatment, stuck with it, and her baby was born virus-free. She says she wouldn't have gone for care on her own. And no matter how far away expectant mothers live, baby shower staff are relentless in finding them and keeping a close watch. We want to prevent. If she misses her dosage and misses, those viruses come out again with more aggression and start multiplying and looking for all the cells to destroy. They could destroy your baby, you know. Mbachi Ko and his wife Rose are both HIV positive and they're both in the baby shower program and their new baby girl was born healthy and virus-free. The program teaches parents how important it is to stay on medication so the babies don't get the virus through breastfeeding. The counselor told us what to do. If we didn't follow the instruction, the baby may might uh, likely to get the virus. The baby shower program is now in 115 churches in Nigeria. 90% of Nigerians attend a place of worship at least once a week. Nigeria is also half Muslim, and they hope to include mosques in the program soon. Father Emmanuel Dagi is the priest here. Our people are so uh, very religious, and because of that, they attach much importance to the priest also. And if something comes to the priest, they accept it wholeheartedly. Initial results show that baby shower is working. A recent study funded by the U.S. National Institutes of Health found that 92% of pregnant women in baby shower got an HIV test, while only 55% of women outside the program did. That's a remarkable achievement. That's a great step forward. The single biggest problem is people don't know their status. They don't know whether they're infected. If you don't know you're infected, you're not gonna get treatment. And if they can capture 92% of the women to learn their status, that gets into the zone of really driving transmission toward elimination. <laughs> They're now looking at whether the program dramatically cuts mother-to-child transmission. Baby shower, I just love it. I, I told somebody that it spreads like perfume. You can spray it here. Somebody else somewhere, mm, mm. So what is that? And comes looking for what it is. The perfume is spreading. With baby shower, it's producing some amazing results. Six weeks after the babies are born, families are called back to church for what's known as baby reception. There are follow-up tests and some lessons reinforced. 
But above all, they celebrate a healthy birth and what they hope will be a turning point for their country, a generation born free of HIV. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm William Brangham in Benue State, Nigeria. Tomorrow night, we turn to the fight against HIV here in America and go to Florida, home to four of the top 10 cities in the U.S. for new HIV infections. Our partners at Science Magazine have all of John Cohen's reporting from this series in their current issue and online. You can find a link to that and all our broadcast pieces on our website. That's pbs.org newshour.